TRT fam, Justin again, reporting from Middle Tennessee, and today I'm doing my first of two videos on why you should just leave estradiol alone, why you should quit tripping out over it, and why it is beneficial in men. Historically, most prescribers, most bros, most patients alike think that estradiol is the devil, when in fact, it's not. It's actually got quite a plethora of benefits. Anyway, let's get started. So the first thing I want to talk about are the sexual benefits of leaving estradiol alone and how estradiol can play a role into sexual function and libido in men. So believe it or not, estradiol can positively influence sexual interest and libido. It can also help with blood flow to the penis because it will also help with the delivery of nitric oxide, with which you may or may not know nitric oxide is a vasodilator. So essentially, boom, it opens the blood vessels in the penis, therefore allowing more blood flow into the penis itself. So, you know, in terms of libido and interest, uh, Fingelstein did some studies 10, 11 years ago, and in the studies, they had men with low testosterone, and there are co cohorts of these men. Some cohorts of the men were giving testosterone just enough to keep their levels mildly low. Some were given enough testosterone to make their levels mildly superphysiological. Well, as you know, anytime your testosterone levels go up, there will be a concomitant increase in estradiol because of aromatization. So one cohort of the study was giving an aromatase inhibitor because they're trying to clamp their levels down low. They're trying to keep their E2 levels low. The analysis demonstrated that the patients who had lower estradiol levels actually reported worse outcomes in terms of sexual interest and libido. So even giving men, believe it or not, can actually improve their libido and or sexual interest as well, uh, as demonstrated by some literature in which patients have are going through androgen deprivation therapy for prostate cancer, but they're given estradiol as part of that ADT therapy, these guys have demonstrated positive effects in terms of libido and sexual interest. The next thing I wanna talk about is estradiol's involvement in growth hormone secretion, as current lines of evidence have demonstrated that estradiol is not only a potent direct uh, regulator of growth hormone secretion, but it's also involvement lies with indirect mechanisms as well. And these have been demonstrated in E2 clamp studies. And E2 clamp studies are studies in which AIs are used to deliberately reduce the amount of estradiol in patients on testosterone replacement therapy or patients not on testosterone replacement therapy. Now, studies have shown that in men who are given testosterone replacement therapy and other cohorts are given testosterone replacement therapy, plus aromatase inhibitors, the strength, the volume of uh, the GH pulses and the volume of GH produced are upwards of 50% higher in the groups that are not involved in the aromatase inhibitors. This essentially brings us to that we can extrapolate the significance of the role of estradiol in the production of GH and the involvement of GH pulses. So the third and final thing I want to talk about today in regards to estradiol and its benefits in men is estradiol being responsible for bone development in men. So osteoclast, osteoblast, osteocytes, they all demonstrate receptors for both estradiol and androgen receptors. However, estradiol receptor alpha is the primary receptor that's responsible for the development and maintenance of the male skeleton. So even in studies in which men are given testosterone alone, as compared to studies in which men are given an aromatase inhibitor plus testosterone, guess what? Again, the AI group demonstrates lower bone mineral density as well as suppressed bone remodeling. In other words, it's not only depleting their bone, it's drawing their bones out, and it's preventing them from returning over and producing new bone. Even guys that are already hypogonadal, I'm talking about guys that already, they already have low testosterone and they already have a high urinary excretion of 
and telopeptides, which are markers for bone resorption, those markers have been attenuated with the introduction of estradiol. Again, I'm talking about guys that already have low T, they already have the markers, the telopeptides that show they already have low bone density. That's been reversed, that's been stopped, that's been attenuated with the introduction of estradiol. Again, what this tells us is that estradiol is the primary sex hormone responsible for the bone development and maintenance in men. So if you don't want to weaken your bones, let the E do its thing. Thanks for watching the first installment of the benefits of estradiol in men and why you should not block it. And we'll drop the next one probably in a week or so. Thanks.